So I want you to imagine a world where the government mandated that supermarkets could only buy carrots individually from farmers. For a carrot to be bought, it would have to be packaged in one crate, and each one crate would then be shipped by one truck. Obviously, this system would be immensely inefficient, and would result in big rigageddon on our highways and some very expensive carrots. Thankfully, we don't live in this world. We live in one in which we can ship thousands of carrots in one truck. By bundling them together, supermarkets only need to pay for the cost of shipping once, ultimately reducing the total money spent. This buy more equals better deal formula is known as an economy of scale. In the following video, I hope to clarify how mass transit leverages economies of scale to massively reduce energy, congestion, and transportation costs. A Prius, the most fuel-efficient car, gets about 50 miles per gallon. That sounds good, but then we must remember that it usually only transports one person. On the other hand, a single New York subway car can carry 250 people, maximizing the usage of energy. Estimates place subway energy efficiencies at 600 passenger miles per gallon. That's more than 10 times the passenger miles of a Prius. When an entire city relies primarily upon public transit, we end up with a place like Singapore. Here, amidst beautiful parks and lively streets, lies a public transportation system that only accounts for 5% of the city's total energy consumption. In Atlanta, a similarly sized city, the population moves around in private automobiles and the transportation system takes up 43% of the city's energy consumption. By switching to a smarter system, we can significantly reduce our energy consumption, creating a more sustainable city. Additionally, public transit saves the most important urban resource, space. Take a look at this image, which compares space usage of 150 people in cars versus one bus. It's incredible how wastefully cars use road space. A smart city absolutely will not allocate so much road space to such a low occupancy mode of transportation. Instead, it would logically give more road space to the transportation modes that move more people, thus increasing the flow that a road can support. In Bogota, a high-quality bus rapid transit system named the Transmillenio carries nearly 2 million passengers per day. The system's success stems from its ability to transport people at a much quicker rate than the surrounding congestion. The New York Times reports. I use El Transmilenio because it's much quicker to arrive at the university or work or whatever place. To arrive at the university on the Transmilenio, it takes me approximately half an hour. But by car, it takes me about an hour and a half or two hours, so it's much quicker. The buses, implemented in 2000, mitigated congestion and the average travel time plummeted by 32%. Smart cities, like Bogota, view their transportation network as a vast circulatory system, not unlike the one within your own body. In order to move people quickly throughout the city, consolidating passengers into shared transportation frees up the circulatory system, improving urban efficiency and quality of life. In the future, our model of a smart city begins with a strong mass transit system, capable of keeping city streets free of congestion and moving its citizens in a streamlined fashion. Next, I want to make an unlikely comparison. Gym equipment with cars. Specifically, I want to point out that both are made out of an expensive material, metal. The pull-up bars, benches, and weights constitute a significant amount of stuff, which translates to a high monetary cost. It would be unreasonable to expect everyone to own their own personal gym. So places like the YMCA split the cost of equipment amongst many, leading to affordable membership fees. So how is this related to cars? Well, cars are just as expensive, if not more than, gym equipment, and are the second biggest expense in American households. But wait a second, nobody owns their own individual gym. It's cheaper to share equipment at the YMCA. Why, why don't we share transportation?
Other nations that do share transportation have seen extensive financial benefits from public transit. For example, Tokyo has an extensive high quality metro system that provides access to the whole city. And to use the system for a year, the ticket price is a mere $1,800. To get the same service in a US city, one needs to pay $8,500 a year. Tokyo's transportation system is cheaper because it uses less stuff than US cities. Two rails instead of 26 lanes of highway, one bus instead of 50 individual cars, and one gallon of gas instead of 25. Economists have calculated that Tokyo spends 3% of its GDP on transportation. For comparison, Phoenix spends 16%. Just like how supermarkets lower carrot prices by bundling transportation costs together, cities can reap the exact same benefits. Around the world, mass transit systems consume less energy, less materials, and less space. And consequently, they are sustainable economically. Several cities, such as Singapore, Hong Kong, and Tokyo, have made their mass transit so effective that the whole system actually runs on a profit. And European cities are not far behind. Many have reached fare box recovery ratios of 75% or more. Furthermore, in public transit cities, the average citizen can see savings of $7,000, which has immense positive benefits on the local economy and it reduces wealth inequality within the society. So when you see that Portland, San Francisco, and Houston are expanding their light rail lines, Know that these public investments lay the foundation for a highly efficient circulatory system. Just like how healthy humans need uncongested blood vessels, healthy cities need streamlined transportation. By building cities more densely and sharing transportation, we ultimately will see reductions in cost and increases in sustainability and social equity. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, Please subscribe and leave a comment about what you thought was most interesting. This is Vitamin Mind. See you next time.